heaven roar over this nation roar over the earth establish thy kingdom and establish thy will we pray and all the people in the 1130 service set that's really good. As we're the growing church, you're doing pretty good since, you know, there's not as many as what there is in the night. We love you. Thank you. Oh, you love my, well, thank you. I appreciate that. So you, that's great. It's a great day. Come on now. We have to Amen. celebrate. I want to, I want to just make mention of this. So I'm going to, I'm going to greet our online. It's so nice of you that are watching around the world, also those of you in the chapel. And I want to just let you know, and those of you in this room today, at the 9 o'clock service, right at the greeting, Brenda, it was amazing. The Spirit of the Lord began to prophesy a really strong word. So I want to just make sure that you can go out, and uh, we'll make that available later for you to hear. And uh, interesting stuff, interesting day, but many victories are being won. And uh, I think we're going to continue to see that. You know, we were talking, yeah. and I have to make mention of this, and maybe you'll bring it up a little bit later. Okay. But first of all, I mean, how about the Supreme Court ruling? Amen. Thank you, Lord. But a lot of people don't know, and you'll have to, they'll do some checking. We'll have the staff get all of the parts on that. But you shared the prophecy, and the Lord says there will be ruling 6 3 some seven, two, eight, one, you know, and at that time, none of us could even see how that was possible, but we found out that there's other rulings, not just, um, the Roe v. Wade that reversal. That was six, three, by the way. Too. That was yeah. six, three. Um, I believe pastor Christie helped me out. The seven, two had to do with concealed carry in defense of the constitution. It, it had to do with limiting, uh, criminal charges on, uh, with, with guns. Um, but then there's also some other ones that we have. Voter to ID see. was touched yeah. on was a one in favor yeah. of Republicans. Yeah. So I just want you to know, be checking out other things that are out there and look at what God is doing. And Pastor Christie reminded me there's another situation about the coach that was suspended in, in school for praying on the football field. That is coming up before the court and things are poised to push toward a return to prayer in school. And I just want you to know, we need to keep praying. Yeah, we do. Keep and, praying. And one of the things that we're gonna do, and those of you that are watching, let somebody know, we're gonna go over some of the uh, uh, different prophetic words that the Lord's been saying and looking at what God said ahead of time and uh, where are we going? And then I'm going to speak a powerful word. Yes, and so, I'm telling you. And good. I saw some things about praying in tongues. I thought I'd seen it all. But you know what? Don't ever think that. <laughs> think okay. that you know, there's always good. something to learn. And, and we learned something and, today. Well, good. And this is important that she's paying attention because she told me. She said, Hank. She's, well, no, that's so funny you're laughing. Okay, but the reason being is, uh, Brenda told me a couple weeks ago, she said, Hank, I am seeing things that you're sharing about praying in tongues, the benefits of it. She says, I think we need to have you put this in a little mini book. Yes. So she's been taking notes. This is my doll here. Yeah. And uh, getting it ready so we can put it in, in writing so yes. we can help Amazing. people. So thank you for doing that. I, I just want to say thank you, It's awesome. We need, you, to, we need really these really resources in here. Yeah. Don't you agree with Amen. that? So. All right. Well, are you excited to praise God? I, will, if you, I think today ought to be a throwdown of praise and worship. I think, come on, somebody. I think today ought to be a throwdown. Come on, some of you need to go. Come on devil take that this is an opportunity to lift up our awesome praise to god he is so worthy he's the god that's never lost a battle he never will he's the god of victory he's bringing breakthrough on every Amen. battlefield in your life so i think we ought to lift those hands to heaven say this say lord lord you're the champion you're the champion you're the king of kings you're the, king of kings. You're the lord Lord, mighty warrior, I give you praise. Come on now, shout like you really believe it, and let's praise the Lord. We praise you. We praise you. Come on, as our hands are lifted like in the days of Moses, Lord, you are bringing victory all across the earth. As the tide is turning, acceleration is taking place. Victories after victories after victories. Lord, you told us 2021 
would be the beginning of many victories that we would see in 2022 and we're seeing it father as our hands are lifted up we thank you that the enemy is defeated he's already defeated Jesus you took away from him the keys to death hell and the grave he is defeated we thank you as our hands are lifted up over the people over their lives over their bodies over their health over their finances over their children over their marriages over their lives it is well victory thank you Lord I feel like there's some people here that you've been having some problems breathing it's just difficulty and uh, I want to pray for you who who is that you would say you know what I've been having just it feels like some difficulty breathing would you be so kind and just kind of step out and go that direction and then we want to pray for you just line them up here we want to lay hands on you and let's believe God together for you to be healed those of you that are watching where's my phone I want Pastor Brenda could you hand me my phone I'm gonna make a point of contact I'm gonna have you go down and pray for the people so here's what I want you know I like to always have a point of contact so right here in my phone as they're coming you that are watching this is the point of contact you say well what do you mean by that well it's amazing how a woman who had an issue of blood mark chapter 5 for 12 years bible said she grew worse she even went to the medical field we believe in the medical field but even the medical field couldn't help this woman and so she said something very powerful because the power of god or the anointing of the holy spirit can be transmitted i don't know how that happens but it happens and she needed a point of contact she needed something to connect her faith to and she said if i could just touch the hem of his garment i will be made whole and all of this issue all of this 12 years of just struggling in pain i'll be made whole it's going to come to an end and so this is the point of contact this is what i'm touching believing god right now for your need to be met because right now your names are scrolling through the phone i believe with all my heart as i'm touching this phone that the power of god is going into your body for you for your loved one when hands are laid upon you in this line right here god is going to touch you and i believe that your issues are going to stop i believe whatever the enemy has tried to afflict you with touch you with is going to stop because of the power of god pastor brenda i want you to come down father as hands are laid upon these people as brenda prays for these people lord as i hold in my hand and put it near dear my heart every person that is watching by social media live stream lord even in the chapel those that are watching and will watch we release that anointing, Lord, that destroys every yoke of bondage, undoes every heavy burden. It lets the oppressed go free. Lord, you are healing your people. We pronounce healing. We pronounce wholeness. We command any issues with breathing, shortness of breath, any lung conditions, allergies. We command it in the authority of Yeshua's name. Come out of the people. We lose healing. We loose your anointing, Lord. Not only by hands being laid upon them, but Lord, hands being laid upon this point of contact. Their issues stop. Virtue, power, not of our own might, not of our own power, but by your spirit, God goes forth and touches every person in the sound of my voice. I speak blessing, peace, calmness over your people and I thank you Lord it is well come on just say with me say it is well it is well it is well it is well you know what David said he said it's well with my soul you know why sometimes you got to speak to your soul your soul is your mind your soul is your will and your soul is your emotions 
And he said, I'm going to bless this, my soul, Psalm 103. I'm going to bless the Lord with my soul. And all that's within me, I will bless his name. Come on, put your emotions, put your will behind and say, my soul is blessed. I bless the Lord with my soul. All that's within me, I bless his name. I loose from my soul anxiety, fretting, fear, worry, depression, anything that I've allowed in my soul that steals my joy, that's affecting my body or my mind, I loose it from my soul. And I bind to my soul righteousness, shalom, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. I bind to my soul. <laughs> it is well. It is well. It is well. It is well. In Jesus' name. Amen. Give him a big shout of praise. We worship you, God. Hallelujah. Well. We got lots to do today so why don't you do this why don't you turn around find somebody share your name and then tell them this i said i bet you didn't know that there are exactly six months until christmas all right if they didn't know let them know and greet one another amen Thank you. Let's give everybody a hand clap just because we can. And uh, all right. Where is Anthony Game Changer? The other Game Changer, Matt, my son, is moving. <laughs> yeah. Matt, that ought to be interesting. Come on out. So. All right. That's like John. When my son John moves, you know, he, oh, my goodness. He, he, we, remember when we helped him move, Brenda? It started snowing. And uh, so John's like, Dad, just grab everything. And, you know, John's like grabbing everything and, and uh, trying not to slip. So anyway, that's a different story. But I hate moving, don't you? How many of you like moving? I mean, I like moving if it's, you know, obviously, you know, a new place. But the process of it is no fun. So, well, I've got uh, Game Changer Anthony. How many of our Game Changers were here on Friday? Woo! Woo! <laughs> okay. First service. I heard you guys played football. We did. Did you really? And wow. That's this really is how cool. you know it's a football church. All the <laughs> ladies got competitive, and we started doing some seven-on-seven. Seven. The ladies played yes. football? That's awesome. It was pretty awesome to see. That's really good. And Matt was hitting people upside the head with footballs, and so it was good. Well, okay. Well, I, I'll be there next time for football and for food. Listen, um, those are great shoes. I told you that in the first service. But, you know, I did tell Anthony, we've got to keep praying. And I was a little concerned about it because last week when he came up, you could tell that he had been really praying because he had holes in his knees. But this week, he, come on, Anthony, you got to work him a little bit. I so left my anyway. holy jeans at home. All right, well, he's done a great job. So what we want to talk about just for a few minutes, oh, here's Matt. <laughs> John, you're quiet today. Oh, elaborate on interesting. I don't know. I know what you mean. I don't understand. No uh, speak text. Okay, so <laughs> anyway. So I wanted to do this. I want to talk a little bit about um, the ruling that came from the Supreme Court and what God's been saying. And uh, I want to, yeah, I want to encourage those of you that are watching to go back out to the nine o'clock service uh, at the time of the greeting. The Lord really spoke something I, I thought very interesting. And of course, uh, join us in Atlanta live. It will not be live streamed. Uh, Atlanta at the gas, was it gas south? Gas south. Gas South Arena, and uh, it's going to be a great time with Pastor Gene Bailey, uh, Lance Walnow, Mario Morello, Dutch Sheets, and I will be there as well, and we're going to have a great time. You're going to join me along with Matt, and Sergeant Stuck, you're going to join me too. I have to have him come so he brings the food and, and uh, our other officers. It's great. But um, anyway, I want you to come over here because this is really important. Now, I want you 
to, to hear very carefully. These prophecies, we've got prophecies he's going to tell you, um, and we're going to prepare those this week that we found all the way back to 2005, that God was really speaking about this nation and to this nation. And I knew something was up uh, back on 9-11 when we met as a church and the Spirit of God began to prophesy. And uh, the Lord told us on that night that, uh, you know, we didn't live stream in those days, but uh, it was really interesting what the Lord was saying as we were documenting what God was prophesying. And the Lord said that we would go to war. And uh, he even named uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, he mentioned that he would raise up from the place where the towers fell, he would raise up a president that would bring this nation back on course. And he talked about more than one term. So I believe that there's things that still need to be played out. Now, here's why I say that. He said, because he said, I will establish a blood right over this land. And I never quite understood, God, what are you talking about a blood right? And then it hit me. I thought, okay, wait a minute. What, what is this blood right, God, that you're, you're speaking about? And, and God was so amazing that through the years, I began to watch him give us clues on what he was getting ready to do. Now, this is very important. When you study scripture and you understand how God looks at things, how God feels about things. You know, uh, I w it was interesting when I was reading the scripture the other day and Jesus went up to a man that had a, a demon. The Bible says that the dumb spirit spoke. Now, everybody that was listening was looking and seeing a man who was speaking, and they thought the man was dumb. But those that had a spiritual understanding realized that it was a demon that was speaking through the man, and it's why he was acting the way that he was acting. And so I say that because a lot of things have been going on in our nation that really is spirits of darkness that don't have any sense about what they're saying. And Paul was so uh, adamant, he said, you need to pray, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2. You need to pray f for, for that which is, again, you know, for wicked and, un uh, wicked and what is it, Brenda? Unruly. Unreasonable. W wicked and unreasonable men. He said, pray that you be delivered from wicked and unreasonable men. Now, if you listen to what they're saying, okay, so really... You look, think about how far abortion has come. Okay, Margaret uh, Stringer, Sanger, Sanger, Sanger excuse me. I, uh, I was thinking of something else. Margaret Sanger. Okay, her whole motive yes. was to exterminate the black population. Right. That, that ought to make you so mad. And then how the Democratic Party has used abortion exactly. as their platform. And use the black populace to convince them that they're on their side. It's, it's absolutely an outrage. I love black people. I love everybody. I do. I absolutely love them. And it makes me, it hurts my heart. My best friend was uh, Bishop Harry Jackson, a black man who's in heaven today. And we talked every day for 16 years. I learned a lot from that man. But here's, here's the thing. So when God looks at something. I know I'm long-winded here, but I'm trying to make a point. you got to put yourself in the heart of God. He's called a father for a reason. He loves children, but, but watch this. If there was anything that made God mad or hurt him through the years was when Israel would worship false gods. And there was one particular God that would just outrage, false God that would outrage God. It would make him so angry. It was the, uh, the false god Baal. And Molech. And under that Baal worship, they would literally take the children and they would sacrifice them to Baal and to Molech, shedding their blood, killing them as an act of worship. And so the reason why this is so important is because blood and spirit go together. When you were created, okay, life was brought forth. Think about Adam. The Bible says when God created him, he took him out of the very dust of this earth, formed him as a clay man. And then the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, 
that God breathed into him the breaths of life, plural. So he could operate in the spirit realm and operate in the natural. And so right at that moment when God breathed into that clay man out of the earth, dust, life went into him. And the Bible says in Leviticus 17 that the life of all flesh is in the blood. Amen. So when Adam came to life, blood was flowing through him. Now, that's when he became a living soul. That's when his spirit began to come alive. So the enemy knows that blood and spirit go together. Every time they would sacrifice someone or a child to the devil or to those false, false gods and shed their blood, it was giving a natural right and a spiritual right for the enemy, the devil, to do what he wanted to do. He had access. How did he gain access? Through the shedding of innocent blood. So over our nation, why does the enemy want to keep the killing of the innocent? So that he can obtain and maintain a blood right that gives him access in the natural realm over people and an access in the spirit realm to carry out his agenda. Now think about how degrading it is. It started with a few months and then it kept getting more and more. Notice then it became outside of the womb. When would it stop? Because the enemy was trying to gain more and more foothold and access. Now, if you don't think that getting a blood right established and reestablished is important, why did Jesus have to shed his blood? Why didn't they just suffocate him? Because of one man's sin, we all sin, the Bible says, and fell short of the glory of God. Through Adam, we've all sinned. Every man born into the world is born with polluted blood, according to Ezekiel 16. So Jesus had to shed his blood. And then what was the next thing that happened 50 days later? The Holy Spirit, because blood and spirit go together. What am I saying to you? Now that this has been ruled by a Supreme Court above by the Supreme God, it's going to stop legal access that the enemy has had to do certain things in this nation. A culture of death becomes a culture of life. Are, are you hearing me? It, it, it shifts everything. And it also positions the nation for the glory, which is the spirit. All right, let's read these prophecies. Let's go ahead, Anthony. Let's go. So I want you to take it away, and then we'll just look at a few of them as you go. All right. Amen. So how many know that there's levels to this? Yeah. Pastor Hank just talked about it. it's not just about the natural, but it's also about the spirit through the blood. And the one thing I wanted to do that I did in the first service, I want to honor pastors because they have stood and they have continued to prophetically speak the word of God despite the narratives, despite the backlash. They have stood in the face of this. And we honor you, pastors. We thank you. Thank you. You know, for those of you who have been around Lord of Hosts for a while, I don't know if you remember it. Pastor Brenda, we thought of, I thought about this in between services. Do you remember that fight we had against Planned Parenthood yeah. in the parking lot? So we had our own Roe versus Wade in the Spirit bout with Planned Parenthood several, several years back, and they were actually just across the street in this area. And we prayed them out of here. And how many have seen the growth and all of the newness that's happened around this Millard area? So that is a small glimpse of what God wants to do over this nation now that that spirit of Molech and Baal has been kicked out. Amen? How many know there's levels to this? Okay, so I want to read this really quick before we jump into um, some of the prophetic words and uh, what we're going to share. But just one real quick, you can find all of these prophecies on hankandbrenda.org prophetic perspectives page. We keep track of all these different things, so that's a great resource to use if you ever want to find out, hey, what's God saying about this particular topic or this current event? Hankandbrenda.org, prophetic perspectives. So the Holy Spirit gave me this. He wanted me to read this to you guys. He said, when it comes to anything with God, with me, we have to understand in order to truly have a sound perspective, you have to look at things through a kingdom lens. So when it comes to reading your Bible and your study time, there's three things that you have to really look at when it comes to reading the Bible. You just don't read it and then just walk away from it, but you have to study it. And the three areas that you look at it from are a historical lens, 
a literal lens, and then a prophetic. Now, how that translates into real life current events like the Roe versus Wade uh, ruling is when you look at it this way, you have the historical. So that's gonna put things into context. So leading up to this, what happened in the, the past 50 years? How did we come to where we are now? And I wanna really focus on this too because millennials, I'm speaking to you, when you look at social media and you look at the media headlines that always say breaking news, they do that on purpose. A lot of things that they do are to cause confusion, to get an emotional reaction, but it also causes a disjointedness. So what happens when they send out and say it's breaking news? It's always in that one particular instance, right? So what a lot of people do is in that one particular instance, that's all they focus on, and they fail to take a step back and look at it from the historical lens. Here's an example of this. The left is having this huge backlash about Roe versus Wade, right? Does anybody remember at the beginning of the year when they were saying genders don't matter? Why does women's rights all of a sudden matter now? That's why you have to look at things from a historical lens because it gives you context. Also, when it comes to the natural, when it comes, uh, the other part I mentioned was, excuse me, uh, the literal from a biblical standard. So the literal aspect of this is reading your Bible, looking at truth. So that's what the Bible is going to do when you look at things in the natural. It's going to give you the literal truth of things, the, the true understanding of how things are supposed to work. And then you also have the prophetic. So when it comes to Roe versus Wade, okay, God, what does this actually point to? What are you trying to do? And that's what we want to share with you today, is that this is pointing to marking of a new era. It's showing that God is saying through his prophetic words that he said for the last few years that this is truly the decade of difference. And I don't know if you remember, Pastor Hank said this multiple times, that it was going to start off harsh, but there were going to be signs along the way to let you know that we've entered into a new era. Well, guess what? We are now in that new era. The other thing I want to mention to everybody too is, hey, don't be afraid to ask questions. Don't just go along with the narrative of what they've been saying. Now, there's a difference between questioning, right, and asking questions, but asking questions is going to help you kind of reframe some of those things and answer, okay, how does this apply from the historical, literal, and now the prophetic of what Jesus is pointing towards? So there's three questions that I really want us to focus on as we kind of dive into this. So first is going to be the uh, historical context of this. So concerning the ruling and the overturning of Roe versus Wade, and really any kind of legislation that's going to come down from any of the three branches, you have to go back to what? The Constitution. That is our historical reference. That is our framework. Okay, so the questions that you have to ask yourself when you're looking at this is whether or not, it's, it's not about whether or not the national government exceeded or overstepped, uh, sorry, it's not about whether or not the decision violates someone's rights. So you see that a lot. People are saying, this violates my rights. This is, this is my body, my choice. The actual question that you should be asking yourself, according to the Ninth and Tenth Amendments of the U.S. Constitution, that's your homework, go look it up. The proper question is whether or not the national government exceeded or overstepped in their powers. And if you look at the Ninth and Tenth Amendment, they did on the, in the initial ruling. They actually corrected the issue. So... One of the things that you'll also notice in, the, in some of the prophecies that Pastor Hank is going to share is the Spirit of the Lord talks about a rightness leading to righteousness. So guess what's happening? We are in that rightness phase that's going to lead to righteousness and an outpouring of God. Amen? One last thing I want to read from the Constitution that I forgot to read first service that I thought was very interesting. You can find this literally in the very first paragraph. But it says, we the people of the United States in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessing of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish the Constitution for the U.S. So for me, when I find words that I don't know, I don't just say, well, I'm just going to move past it. I'm going to look it up. Guess what posterity means? The word posterity is defined as all future generations of people. 
I don't know about you, but it sounds like the founding fathers were thinking of all of the unborn future U.S. citizens who would inherit the framework of this country. Now I'm going to read this excerpt from uh, hankandbrenda.org. It's on the Prophetic Perspectives page, and then I'll turn it over to Pastor Hank. But I want you guys to just pay attention and read and listen to this. Um, It says, life, liberty, the pursuit of eternal joy through the kingdom of God. All of these unalienable rights are carefully and divinely crafted within God's purpose and will for each and every one of us, well before we are formed in the womb. We are marked for a specific assignment, for a specific season, and God desires for us to fulfill that call. God makes it very clear that every life is sacred and valued without measure. The decision by the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade marks a significant shift, not only in the political landscape of this nation, coming back to its intended constitutional framework, but also represents a transition into the new era that the Lord has promised. Now, I'm getting ready to read this next paragraph, and I want you to pay attention because all of these things that are pointing to the new era are actually mentioned in some of the prophecies that Pastor Hank has said. The Spirit of the Lord has prophetically spoken at length concerning the new era through this ministry. God has said that in this new era, there is an anointing of preservation reserved for the future generation and a dedication to the children. You have to go back and listen to the first service, 9 a.m. service, because the Spirit of the Lord spoke and said that there was a spirit of adoption. God means business about this generation for the children. In this season, we will see a put-it-back movement where laws will be overturned to restore rightness and righteousness, including abortion. Prayer is going to be invited back into the schools. Perverted curriculums abandoned. Child actors and celebrities serving the Lord. Now, pay attention to that one because Pastor Hank had a prophecy about that specifically, so you want to mark that down. That is on Prophetic Perspectives. You can find that. And finally, mass gatherings of the youth worshiping Jesus publicly to still and silence the Avenger. Now, as we celebrate this monumental victory, continue to press into the spirit of the Lord because it is your prayers that will continue to cause the glory of God to restore this land. Amen and amen. Good. Amen. I want them to put up the 2016 uh, prophetic word. This word was very interesting to me when the Lord first gave it because I knew in my heart that we better get ready because something significant was about to happen. And uh, God was giving us a clue. And uh, so if they'll put that up, it says, Your Supreme Court will change, for I am the Supreme Judge. God says, Watch. For I will raise up when there is a vacancy of two. There there wasn't at that time. When there is a vacancy of two, and then what? Three. So God's putting it on record. There's going to be a second, and then there'll be a third. And he talks about what will happen on the third one. The Spirit of grace says there shall be a woman that I will place there at the helm, and this shall be a compassionate woman, says the Lord. And that happened at the third Supreme Court vacancy. And it shall be her compassion for the right for the unborn to live that shall what? Overturn and topple the laws that have aborted the innocent. I knew it was going to happen. What does a nation look like filled with glory? Now why does God mention spirit slash glory and the toppling of abortion? Blood and spirit go together. God is saying, I want to cover this nation with glory, but I got to get the blood right. Are you hearing me? This is how important this is. Why do you think they're fighting like hell, sounding like hell to keep it? Because they want a different outpouring of a different spirit. They want a culture of death that steals your freedoms. They don't want a culture of life. And God says, can you see it? Can you see it? All right, put the next one up, please. We'll just read these very quickly. And, it, uh, and then it says, um, this is uh, 2018. Righteousness and justice 
shall be established now, says God. Watch what happens as your courts shift. So he's saying the courts are going to shift. Now, how many of you, and those of you that are watching, if they can get me on camera here, how many of you know the rulings? The Supreme Court ruling was 6-3. There was another ruling they just had, 7-2. And which one was that? The Second Amendment. Then there was an 8-1 that just happened that had to do with voter ID. So we're already seeing it. You haven't seen those kind of numbers. But God prophesied it in 2018. It was coming. He said, when you see ruling 6-3, 7-2, 8 1. What's the next thing? Do not fear. For watch out of the mouth of babes and sucklings. Right there, he's given us another clue. The babies who have not had a mouth to be able to speak and to breathe. I have, have I not declared, I've ordained perfect praise to steal the avenger. Their voices have not been in vain. And he's talking about abortion. Those who've never had a chance to speak upon this land. See the connection between God doing something with the children that's going to steal the avenger that has to do with abortion and rulings that preceded it. Amen. He's telling you there's a shift. Amen. All right, let's go on. June 22nd. This was just uh, last Wednesday. That's why you need to come to our Wednesday night services of prayer. It's been pretty powerful. So the Spirit of the Lord prophesied last Wednesday... He says, there's the rising of God. It is the rising of his agenda. And notice he said this before the rulings. Swift victories shall be won right after another through the courts of this land. Have we not seen that? Are you ready for some months of victory? Are you ready to see that the tide is truly turned, says the living God? Now this one is... March 31st, this was 2019. I, this is where I had a vision. I was up on the stage. I, I just said, I, so I said it. Hey, I just saw something, and I explained what I saw. I saw a great celebration coming to this land because of an announcement that will be made concerning Roe versus Wade. There shall be such a great rejoicing that is about to hit this land, but there shall be a backlash of anger. But do you know what the Lord said is going to happen? You have seen a march for women. You've seen a march for men. The Spirit of God says there shall be mothers and fathers that will gather and say, we shall bring our children and we shall march in a place of celebration of what? Amen. A new era. God was saying it's going to happen. Okay, let's go on. This one is uh, May 22nd. Now, pay attention. Anthony pointed this out. Just as things what? Get heat. Has it been heated up? Yes. Did you notice what God said? It's going to be heated. And then what did he say would come? He'll start cooling it down. Have you been enjoying the cooling? Yes. Now, I think there's going to come another flow, and it's going to cool again. Because God's trying to show us something. Now, here's what's significant. Just as things get heated up in your land, watch this. Now, look at where the prophecy was. May 22nd, 2019. Fast forward three years to the exact same month, almost the exact same day. In May of 2022, this was in 2019, it actually got heated. The heat wave began right at the time that the heat wave was announced on the nation. May of 2022, three years from that prophecy, same month, there was the leak on the Supreme Court. Okay? Watch this. Just as things get heated up in your land, there will be a distraction. It would be great if you would have said leak. There will be a distraction that shall be from your Supreme Court. It will bring discussion, fear, fear arguing and bickering because it's about to fall on this nation for the sake of time let's keep going uh there's another one which one is this one uh march was it third 2019 for the enemy has thought that through the massacre in the womb through abortion that he could stop the destiny for the future generation but listen to me says the lord the light that is coming now stop right there what did god prophesy before 2020 we are coming into the decade of difference. If you've been following this ministry, prophesied ahead of time that there would be a plague that would hit the land. Do you remember that? And he also said that uh, the decade would start off harsh and then God would bring us into rest. He also said that the decade would be dedicated to the children. But then he said something very powerful. He said, the enemy wants a revolution of blood. But God says, I shall bring a revolution of light. 
Which a revolution, the definition is a purposeful overflow, overthrow. God's overthrowing darkness. So now watch. But listen to me, says the Lord, the light. What is that? The revolution of light that is coming is causing a dissatisfaction and outrage. And they will say enough of the murdering of children in this land. Okay. Now this one is March. Uh, this one also is March uh, 3rd. Spirit of God says, I'm moving in the what? In the now. Okay, that's three years ago. What's taking you so long, God? And he's looking at it going, it's now. I'm moving in the now. Now my glory is coming upon this earth. That's why I had to get the blood right. And it is coming fast. I stand now to move and expose, to settle and to what? Unite. And I'm uniting the United States that bears its name, changing your laws, establishing rightness and righteousness on your courts. And you can thank President Donald Trump for that. Whether you like it or not. March 29, 2017. Supreme thing, isn't it? I love how God just, he's got an attitude. I love the Lord's attitude. And uh, there was a prophecy years ago, and I remember giving it. Where the Lord says, I'm going to become a positive irritant in their hinder parts. <laughs> Remember when the Lord said that? And then he starts prophesying about the times when the Philistines, when, when they touched something that was sacred. They touched the, the uh, Ark of the Covenant that contained God's presence. And they, and, they, and they touched it, these Philistines, and God <laughs> allowed them to have hemorrhoids. And they were so just like reprobate. And like we're seeing today, and they began to make an idol out of hemorrhoids. And they called them golden hemorrhoids. Remember that? Or emrods is the scripture. Are you serious? I don't know. Why would you now worship it? Oh, my gosh. So God is being a positive irritant in their hinder parts. By the way, I like what 45's response was regarding the ruling. He said, well, God decided. Yeah. Supreme thing, isn't it? Children in the womb who live, leaping in the womb, shall now leap upon the soils of your land as abortion laws will change, giving them life and a chance to leap. I don't know if there's any more, but anyway, let's give God honor and praise. And um, exciting times. Amen. <laughs> I love God. And we're going to continue to break this down. There's some other ones that are uh, from 2005 going forward. There's there's one interesting one that the Lord said that I want them to pull up at some point is the Lord was talking about one prophecy he said the children in heaven that were aborted are praying. They've been praying and they're praying for this day. And then God tells them that they're going to have their day. They've had their day. And it's going to, it's going to continue. Listen, these, these, uh, these blue states, which it makes no sense, they're protesting in the blue states. Um, they're going to become purple. You know what purple is? Yeah, it's going to be a bruising. And they're going to kind of try to shift to be moderate. And then eventually they're going to shift red. And, and it's, going to, it's going to shock people what God is doing. That's why there's a whole new era of new faces, new people rising up into different places of power. Praise God. Well, I want to preach to you for the next three hours. If you give me a moment. No, I'm not going to do that. But please, would you grant me the honor of preaching and those of you that are watching just a few minutes where we've been talking about praying in tongues. And I want to talk about how two things, praying in tongues is a weapon, but also God is testing us. And I want to prove this to you now. Keep in mind in every church service, according to Paul in his writings in 1 Corinthians 14, you have in every church service, you have the believers, those who have been saved are saved and they pray in tongues. You have in services those who are saved that for whatever reason, they don't pray in tongues. Either they don't believe it, they don't want to, or as Paul says, they haven't learned. Then there are those in every service that Paul calls the unbelievers. And the Bible says that praying in tongues in 1 Corinthians 14 is a sign to them. And that's, you know, people that haven't, you know, accepted Jesus Christ yet, they're unbelievers. So we need to break these down so that we can see the benefits. Because I'm convinced, as I give you my closing passage today, and those of you that are watching, if you will understand the test that we're in, and, and, and if we will just do what God wants us to do, 
and I'll explain that to you, we will have a tremendous victory in our nation and the nations of the earth. I want you to look at um, what Jesus said in Acts 1, verse 8. And then we're going to go over to Acts 2, and I'm going to go very quickly in these scriptures. If I don't get to everything, you can go back and watch the 9 o'clock. In Acts chapter 2, or Acts chapter 1, excuse me, it says, But you, Jesus speaking, you shall receive dynamite, explosive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, where you'll be my witnesses both in Omaha, Jerusalem, and whatever city you live in, and in all Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth. So what would you receive? You would receive power. That's why the enemy doesn't want us praying in tongues. So Acts chapter 2, fast forward. This is right after uh, 50 days after Jesus had died on the cross and he shed his blood. Acts chapter 2, verse 1, the day of Pentecost was fully come. And they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them, watch this, cloven tongues like a fire. The reason why fire had to appear, John the Baptist said, there's one who's coming after me who I'm not worthy to even tie his shoes. But he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with what? Fire. You want to have fire for God? You want to be on fire for God? Get filled with the Holy Spirit? Increase the amount of praying in tongues? But also fire had to settle upon each of them because fire was a sign or a witness. Throughout Scripture, when God approved of a blood sacrifice, the fire would fall. You know why I believe there's coming a fresh Pentecostal outpouring? It's because of something that has happened with the blood right over the nation. It's going to cause the fire of God to intensify. It's going to bring judgment against the wicked and it's going to be a glorious outpouring to the righteous. But I want you to look at a verse that I want to make as my pretext today that will help you to see what is really on the heart of God. Three weeks ago as Pentecost Sunday was coming, I was praying and I said, God, speak to my heart. Speak to the people. What is it that you would communicate to the people? And the Lord said to me, what would happen, Hank, like on the day of Pentecost? Look at verse 4. And it says, and they all were filled with the Holy Ghost, and watch this phrase. They began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Holy Spirit said to me, Hank, what do you think would happen? What do you think the possibilities would be if people who are born again would be filled with the Holy Spirit and all Christians prayed in tongues? What would be the state of the church what would be the state of the cities, the nations? What would be the state of the believer? What would be the state of our politics if everybody began to pray in tongues? Not only together, but also increase the amount of praying in tongues. If Genesis 11, the Bible says that the, that the earth was of one language... And God had to come down and he said, let us, speaking of the Trinity, he looked at them and their ability to, to build a tower that would ascend up into heaven. And God said, because they're of one language, there will not be anything that will be restrained from them because they speak the same language. Everything is possible. So then God went down. He absolutely scattered their languages so that they couldn't work together. But get, can I tell you what happened on the day of Pentecost? 120. They were all gathered together in one place. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. All speaking the language of heaven. And those in Jerusalem heard them speak in their own language. That was the supernatural sign. Here's my point. What would happen if we would all unify? Could we be with the right spirit? Different than what was at the Tower of Babel building. We that are of the right spirit, what could we build and accomplish for God in the earth? If we would all just increase praying in tongues. And pray in tongues at the same time. So I want to show you that it's a weapon very quickly. The first thing that praying in tongues does, and I'm telling you the truth. It will absolutely protect you and keep you in the spirit of truth. It will absolutely keep you in the right perspective of heaven. 
I don't listen to the news. I did uh, when the Supreme Court ruling uh, came out on Thursday. I clicked it on. I haven't watched it. I haven't sat down and watched a program. I'm telling you the truth in two years, at least, even before that. And I, after listening to it, I thought, wow, now I know why I don't watch the news. <laughs> but I wanted to hear what they were saying. And the first thing that we have to understand is if you sit there and feed on talk radio and the news and you're continually, listen, they have been lying and lying and lying and lying, creating false narratives, trying to get you to bite on their carrot of false information. That's why they censor those who are speaking truth. Why would you bother in a nation that the Constitution gives you free speech where they need to all of a sudden censor you and then hire people who say that what you're saying uh, has been fact-checked and it's not accurate? Your fact-checking is inaccurate. And that's a fact. So Jesus warns of these days. And I want you to look here in Matthew 24. Oftentimes people quote Matthew 24 and they say, well, in the last days, in the end times, there's going to be wars, rumors of wars, earthquakes in various places, nations in perplexity. Listen, but they, they forget something that is so important and it's why praying in tongues is such an amazing weapon to keep you in the spirit of truth so that you will not be what Jesus warned. And that's this, you will not be deceived. Watch this. Matthew 24. Jesus sat upon the Mount of Olives, verse 3, and the disciples come unto him privately saying, Jesus, tell us when these things will be and what sign shall be the sign of thy coming of the end of the age. And Jesus answered, said, listen, the first sign, take heed that no fake media or anybody else, a fake election does not deceive you. It's amazing. It's, it's so amazing. You know, you have this leaker on the Supreme Court. Where are they? Is it still on the desk of the DOJ? I mean, this is, this is, this is crazy stuff. See that no man deceives you. Now they don't even want to watch a movie called 2,000 Mules, and I encourage you to watch it if you're questioning if the election was truly stolen or not. Go out and watch it. And then they're talking to, the, to the, the, the DOJ at the time, and he's refusing to watch it. I don't want to watch a movie. Why? Because it's going to make you look bad because you're standing for lies? Come on, what are you afraid of? Take heed, no man deceives you. For many shall come in my name saying, hey, I'm Christ. Or they'll say it's Christian and will deceive many. Verses 4 5, 11, and 24. And can I tell you, four times Jesus said the sign that would be more than any other sign. Verse 4, verse 5, verse 11, and verse 24 was, let no man deceive you. He said deception would be the greatest sign of the end days. And he even said that this deception would lead to many who, who their love would wax cold and they would get easily offended. That's why people are so offended, because you're deceived. If you knew the truth. Now, look at John 16. Now, before you show John 16, look at 1 Corinthians 14. i got to establish this truth. Verse 2. Look at 1 Corinthians 14, verse 2. This is extremely important regarding tongues. For he that speaks in an unknown tongue, Paul says, doesn't speak unto men. Even though on the day of Pentecost they were not speaking to men. Men heard them. In the spirit, in their own language. That's the difference. They were not, as the Baptists, a lot of them say, oh, they were just speaking to men. No, they weren't. They were speaking unto God in unknown tongues. And God allowed it to be a sign to be interpreted for men to hear. But they weren't speaking to men. Men heard. For he speaks in unknown tongues, speaks not unto men, but who? Unto God. Now watch this. For no man understands him. Here's the key. How be in the what? In the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, those mysteries are you can't figure them out. That's not the kind of mysteries, okay, that he's talking about. God will download revelation into you. Okay, we'll talk about that another time. I'm not sure I'm going to preach next week being before July 4th, but I'm going to come up with something. But here's the point. How be it in the spirit? Now, why is this important? Because if you pray in tongues, your spirit prays to God in the spirit. Now, why is that important? Look at John 16. 
Because when you pray in tongues, it protects your perspective. It keeps you in the spirit of truth. That when people say stuff, you know, it's like I, I can read over social media and somebody will say something because I pray in tongues a lot. And I'm, I'm connecting spirit to spirit with God. The Holy Spirit of truth is upon me. I look at stuff on social media and I'm like, ah, that ain't it. Some of you need to do that. That ain't it. Quit arguing. Just it's very simple. That ain't it. When they want you to take your kids to a drag club, that ain't it. When they want to tell you that it's okay for a man and a man to get married and God somehow endorses it, that ain't it. If they want you to be convinced that you can be whatever you want, you want to be a tree, you want to imagine yourself being a dog, you want to dress up with a wig and you're a man and put on a dress that somehow, let's play make-believe dress up that you're a woman. No, that ain't it. That's all you got to say. That ain't it. Same with your relatives. They want to get in all kinds of arguments. No, that ain't it. Why? Because the spirit of truth is in you. Well, how do you get it? Praying in tongues. Every time I'm come, my mite vrusa brokala mahaye, my spirit is connecting. Talking to God in the spirit. And watch what happens. How be it? Verse 13, John 16. When you pray in the spirit. The spirit of truth comes. You activate. You bring the, the spirit of truth upon you, within you. You pray out spiritual truths. It keeps you in truth. That you'll be able to recognize deception and go, that ain't it. You won't have your perspective off like some folk are. Now look at the next one. Look at, look at Jude, Jude verse 18. We always quote Jude verse 20. You build yourself up in your most holy faith, you know, pray in the Holy Ghost. Well, read the verses. Why should you pray in the Holy Ghost? Because there is a jacked up, messed up culture out there. And the only way to stay sane in an unsane world is to get over in the spirit. Look at verse 18. How that they told you that there will be mockers in the last time. Are we seeing that? Who should walk after their own godly lusts. Look at verse 19. You want to know where these people that are crying out to shred children, to snap a head of a baby, cut its neck off, rip its limbs off, put it out there at nine months of age even? Come on, are you kidding me? Of that baby's life? Are you kidding me? Really? Yeah, you. You are celebrating that you can shred a child and break its neck and cut off its head and its limbs. Yeah, you. Aren't you proud? And you think that's called normal? No. Now they're calling us pro-birthers. Are you kidding me? What other new name you're going to come up with? You're a murderer. But, but here's why. Here's why. Look at the next verse, verse 19. Here's why. Here's, here's why they want to support the killing of the unborn. Because it really isn't about that child. Here's what it's about. They separate themselves because they're sensual. And they don't have the spirit. In other words, it's about lasciviousness and sex. Promiscuity. We can just sit there and sleep with whoever we want. We don't have to care about the outcome. What they ought to do is cut down on fornication laws. Thou is not allowed to sleep with another person outside of marriage. Wow, what would that do? Verse 20, but here's how you keep yourself from ungodly lusts. Those who separate themselves that are sensual, they're perverted, they're disgusting. But you, beloved, build, and we love them. We got to say that we love you, but just get informed. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, how do you do it? Pray in the Holy Ghost. Why? Because there's ungodly lust. There's people that, that are out there that are sensual. What will it do if you pray in the Holy Ghost? You'll keep yourself in your holy faith. You'll keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus. Now, let me show you how praying in tongues is a weapon. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 7. We're going to go very quickly for the sake of time because I want to keep you all day. Verse 7. 
By the word of truth, I'm just taking one verse here to show you three things in that verse. By the word of truth, what's the word of truth? This Bible is the word of truth. And it says, by the power of God. Acts 1.8, you shall receive what? Power. So that's the Holy Spirit. That's praying in tongues. So not only do you have your Bible that's a weapon, you have praying in tongues that's a weapon, and you have what? The armor of righteousness. That's the blood. You're not made righteous outside of the blood. So you have three things in this world that give you tremendous victory. Your Bible, praying in tongues, and the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. I plead the blood. Amen. Praying in tongues. The word of God. Amen. Now look at Ephesians chapter 6. Let's go over there to verse 13. Oftentimes when people, you know, quote uh, the armor of God, you know, they'll say, well, we have the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, our loins are girt about with truth, and we have the shield of faith which will be able to distinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. But they, they quit reading. Look what it says in verse 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to what? Withstand or stand. You know what that word withstand is? That you may be able to covenant. In other words, that you'll be able to, what it meant in, in Roman language of a soldier is they had huge spikes in their shoes. And Paul was saying, hey, you'll be able to stand like that Roman soldier with spikes and you won't be moved off your place. You're unmovable. You will, you know your covenant. You know what your covenant rights are. You know what God has said and you won't be moved. So when you stand on your covenant, stand therefore, right? When you've done all to stand. And then above all, look at verse 16. Take the shield of faith so that you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit. So what's the sword of the spirit? The word of God. And then, it, and then people stop there. Okay, so we have the helmet of salvation, the sword of the Spirit. Oh, it's the Word of God. But look, keep reading, verse 18. Praying always, same, come on, armor, with all prayer and supplication in the what? Oh, I just showed you 1 Corinthians 14, 2. He that prays in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians 14, 2, does not speak unto men, but in the spirit he prays and he speaks unto God. That is part of your spiritual armory. Yes. Amen. 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 What would happen if we all prayed in tongues more? Now let's go on. Look at Luke chapter 11. Look at verse 9. They can start making their way up here, but I'm not sure I'm going to listen to you or watch you or do anything like that. You know, Pastor Doug, I'm just teasing. <laughs> Usually if they start coming to play the piano, like Brandon's coming, doesn't mean I'm going to pay attention to you. No, okay, here we go. We got to get done. And I say unto you, Jesus, now, no, put up Luke 11, verse 1. I got to go back uh, to show this. Come on Wednesday night so you learn how to pray stronger. But look at Luke 11. And it came to pass that as Jesus was praying, notice he was praying in a certain place. He stopped praying, and one of his disciples said, hey, Jesus, teach us to what? So the context of everything that follows in the chapter is based on prayer. As John taught his disciples, verse 2, Jesus shows them a model. And he says unto them, when you pray, you say, our Father, which is art in heaven. How many heard the Lord's Prayer model? Then you go further down, and Jesus teaches about the spirit of prayer. And he, and he talks about persistence. He talks about importunity. He said a man will come at midnight and knock on the door uh, asking for bread. Well, how many of you know if a man knocks at your house at midnight, right? You strap your gun on, your Second Amendment right. You get your guns in place. You get your three German shepherds released. The cameras are already on and rolling. And you have lights that shine, right? And the snipers are up on top of the roof. I'm just describing my home. But anyway, so, as, so this is what happens. Now watch this. He's talking about the opportunity. He says, not because it's midnight, but he said because he's his friend. So he's talking about, you know, it's not about relationship. It's about the spirit of how you carry yourself to get your prayers answered. But then he goes on and he shows you four dimensions of, of, of what I call your prayer life. And one of this, now look here. Verse 9, and I say unto you, Ask, and it will be given you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asks, receives. Now that word, ask, you keep asking. You don't keep repeating, but you have a determination that whatever you ask the Father in Jesus' name, He's going to do it. 
Then the word seek. Seeking is literally I'm going to worship, I'm going to praise, I'm going to wait on God, and I'm going to have a relationship that's not based on a prayer list. Okay. I remember one time I was trying to, uh, you know, increase my prayer time. I got up really, really earlier than I normally do. And I went in and I have my first day I started. Well, actually, my first day I was okay. The second day, it was torture. You ever done that? Like you work out on your, uh, on your aerobic machine. First day, like, hey, this is great. I'm really so glad I spent money on this. Next day, it's a closet. And then the third day, you know. And so the next day I came back, I'm yawning. I'm like, oh, my gosh, I shouldn't have got up this early. And the Lord said to me, he said, Hank. He said, why don't you go back to bed? I'm like, Lord? He said, yeah, when we both will enjoy this. Because, you know, I mean, does God want to listen to a yawn session? No, he didn't. (laughs) So anyway, so that comes from seeking. Then there comes knocking. There comes whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in the heavens. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in, 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 in the heavens and out of the heavens on the earth. It's the knocking is a spiritual warfare dimension. It's taking your authority, taking your covenant rights and using it. And so those are the three dimensions, ask, seek, knock. But there's a fourth one. And Jesus goes on, and I'll just read it to you for the sake of time. He says, if you, verse 13, are being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask? So praying in the Holy Spirit is another part and another dimension. Now I'm going to show you two last scripture. I'm going to give you Isaiah 59, 19 through 20. Watch this. The enemy's pressing against you. If the enemy is trying to attack you, watch this. Verse 19. So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. And when the enemy comes in, whether he comes in a little or like a flood, right? Or he comes in. Like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will raise opposition, a standard, a resistance, a barrier against him. Well, how does the Spirit of God raise up a standard? When you start going, Kotaramaha, Kisorebekite. Come on, have you ever watched Rocky Balboa? And he's just thinking, come on, Rocky, what are you doing, man? He's just taking all these punches. You know, he's getting hit. Mr. T's like, come on, come on, Balboa. You ain't nothing, Balboa. And, you know, he, Rocky's just like, oh, Adrian. And I'm like, quit calling for your wife. Be a man. Step up in the ring. And he gets all these hits. That's some Christians. But then something happens. All of a sudden, Rocky changes. After 300 beatings. And he rises up. He's like, come on. Hit me here. You ain't knocked it. Come on, hit me here. And he knocks him out. I remember the Russian one. At the end, he wins. He beats that Russian. And at the end, he's got his little kid, and he's talking to the news, and the Russians around him. He's like, you know, when I first came here, you didn't like me, and I didn't like you. But people can change. (laughs) Right? So... But what made Rocky rise up and go from getting punched to winning? What's going to make in your life when you feel like the devil's beating on you, all of a sudden something to shift and the Spirit of God steps in? It's when you kota ramamasa ikeredese ripatota ramaya. God rises up and he raises up a standard. Now I want to show you this last thing. Judges 7. I want to show you right now in this nation, I believe in the earth, in closing, I'll make it quick, where we are. And what the test is that I told you ahead of time. Look at Judges 7. Then Zerubbabel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod, so that the host of the Midianites, that was the enemy, were on the north side by the hill of Moriah in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with me are too many for me to give the enemy, the Midianites, into their hands. Lest Israel will puff themselves up, saying, their own hands save them, or President Trump. Come on. Sometimes God allows certain things so you don't get your eyes on a man. Verse 3, now therefore go, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, whoever is what? Fearful and afraid. We saw this already. There were 32,000 soldiers, supposedly, at the time 
that Gideon summoned the people to fight against the enemy. 32,000 soldiers. But watch this. And there returned 22,000. So out of the 32,000, the majority were afraid. Sounds like American preachers. Sounds like American Christians. There are preachers that have still closed their churches down, but they're raking in the paycheck. And how dare we support that when they don't think you're essential? Too many people are afraid. Too many people are reporting all the doom and gloom. And they're not qualified to take back a nation or to prevail against the enemy who's trying to attack the nation. That's where these people were. Sounds like Christians. Sounds like people that are caught up in the woke culture. Amen. We're afraid to speak out. We're afraid to say marriage is between one man and one woman, say it's God. We're afraid to say abortion is murder and massacre. We're afraid to stand up and speak the truth in love. That's the majority of a lot of Christians, a lot of churches, a lot of preachers. 22,000 left. Now, let's keep reading. Watch what happens because there's a test that came. And God is very clear about this test. Remember what the Lord said to me on, uh, on, uh, before Pentecost Sunday, Acts 2-4. What would happen if they all began to speak in what? So what was it that God wanted to see? An increase of what? Tongues. Let's keep reading. Here's the test. And the Lord said unto Gideon, verse 4, The people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water, and I'm going to test them. For there, right there, and it shall be that whom I say unto you, this shall go with you, the same shall go with you. And if whoever I say unto you, they're not going with you, Gideon, the same shall not go. Now here's the test. So he brought the people, Gideon did, down to the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that laps of the water with his what? So here's the test. How they use their tongues. If they use their tongues. God was watching to see if they use their tongues. Because if they use their tongues, they're qualified to be one of those who will deliver a nation from the enemy. This is the test. This is why God said it to me three weeks ago. He said, everyone that laps of the water with his tongue is a dog laps. Him shall you sit by yourselves. So in other words, they're going to keep their eye on the enemy who's trying to invade their nation. Come on. That's why you don't just cave in give in and as they keep changing words you just keep changing your words and go along and agree with them don't want to offend anybody the church has become so nice nice is conformity not say be rude but don't conform just because you don't want to offend anybody so you're afraid to speak up and speak out or stand for anything by the way now you know why you need to vote if you haven't yet registered to vote get out there and register to vote in the midterm elections so however you use your tongue, if you use your tongue, are you ready? And they're all using their tongue at the same time. He said, those you set by themselves. Likewise, here's the majority of the remain. Okay, 22,000 left, you have 10,000 that remain. Here's the other ones. These guys, this is where some Christians are, okay? You may not be afraid, but you, you're, you're just so inundated with your world, your struggle, your, your life, all the things that are happening, that you're just looking to store up the water for your own spiritual nourishment while your nation goes to hell and is being invaded by the enemy. You won't talk about woke culture. You just keep lapping up the blessings. Oh, you know, I'm just, I just love the word. I just love prayer. I, I want to hear messages that motivate me. I want to go to a church where they don't have politics. Yeah, because you got your, bar your head buried. Stuck in the sand, America. While they're stealing your freedoms. Trying to defund your law enforcement. So who's going to protect you? Take your guns away. So all you're doing is, oh, I'm just going to keep lapping up the blessings. Oh, the Christian love. 
Ooh, I just love. And God says, uh, you're not qualified. You saw the wimps, they're gone, 22,000 of them. Now you're just the wanderers. You're just hoping that somebody else will fight for you while you just enjoy your own, your own pleasure. Come on, when are you going to put your life on the line? When are you going to fight for God, family, and country? When are you going to fight for the unborn? Fight for the law enforcement. Fight for our veterans. Fight for our constitution. Fight for our flag. All right. Watch what happens. And the number of them that put their lap with their tongues or used their tongues <laughs> was 300. But all the rest of the people, in closing, bowed down, took their eyes off the enemy. Because think about it. If you're bowing down, lapping up like this, you, you ain't keeping your eye on the, uh, on the enemy that's attacking your nation. Not the ones that went like this. I dare you to try to attack my nation. I dare you to try to censor me. I'm going to keep speaking out and using my tongues. Now notice what happened. Verse 7, last scripture, Pastor Doug come. And the Lord said unto Gideon, by the 300 men that lapped with their tongues, that used their tongues, realized the importance of their tongues, will I save you, America, Canada, Australia, the earth, and deliver the Midianites into your hands. Stand to your feet. Amen. Amen. Pastor Doug, why don't you come wrap this baby up and uh, thank you for being here. God bless you. Amen. Wasn't that a great message? Amen. Amen. It's been a great day. So, I just got to tell you. So, Pastor Doug called me this morning. He said, Pastor Hank, if you wear your black pants and black shoes and your gray jacket I'll wear mine right. and so we matched today he called <laughs> I asked him to wear a tie but he wouldn't I don't wear do it, ties so. <laughs> praise God I'm retired from well altar team is already up here if you need prayer today for anything in your life you want the prayer of agreement the altar team is here ready to minister to your needs so you can just work your way up here at the conclusion of service today and they'll be glad to pray with you let's do this this morning I'm, I feel like we need to do it this way. I would like everyone here just to bow your heads with me for a minute. You know, the first place that we have to start in this battle of being part of what we call God's army is accepting Jesus Christ and what he's done for us into our hearts and our lives. And that's where it starts is a prayer of faith, believing that Jesus was sent. And he's the only way. The Bible says there's only one name on earth or under heaven that whereby we can be saved, and that's the name of Jesus. And when this life is over, we either go to heaven or we go to hell. That's the truth of it. And none of us here want to go to hell. Hell is for eternity. There's no parole board in hell. Once you're there, you're there for eternity. So it's a very serious thing, and that's why it's so important that we make that decision to invite Jesus into our life and experience what the Bible calls a new birth. And I just want to ask, is there anyone here today in this audience, and you would just slip up your hand and you say, Pastor Doug, I want prayer. I want to make sure that I'm in. I want to make sure that I'm on my way to heaven. I want to make sure that Jesus Christ is my Savior. I'm going to give you that opportunity. I'm going to count to three today. And at that point, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if you would like prayer. One, two, Three, raise your hand right now if there's anyone here that wants prayer for salvation. You say, hey, Pastor Doug, I'm not 100% sure that I would make it to heaven. Okay, let's do this. Let's pray for the online audience to include themselves in this as well as those that are here. Let's pray together. And you just repeat after me as I pray. Father in heaven, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you that he went to the cross. He was crucified. He was buried, and he rose on the third day. And now, Lord, I ask Jesus Christ to come into my heart, be my Savior. I will serve him for the rest of my life. Forgive me of any sin in my life, and make me a new creature. Thank you for doing that. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. And if you prayed that prayer for the first time today, you're in. That's just the start of a new walk, what we call the new birth. So you can contact us. If you're watching online, we'll get information to you. We'll pray in agreement and show you the next steps. If you prayed that today, come on up and uh, we'll give you information and pray for you too to continue and show you how to walk in that. A couple announcements that I wanted to make. Um, we are starting a corporate prayer for three uh, Tuesdays that are coming up for the flash points that are happening across the nation. And the next one that happens will be this coming Friday in Atlanta. And there'll be an open prayer here for anyone that would like to join us this coming Tuesday at noon. So if you can come for all or part of that for an hour and join our prayer team, just uh, put that on your calendar, come on in. And there's a, a flyer on your seat today. Take that with you, put it in your calendar and make sure you join us for those prayer times. Yeah, because we believe that Flashpoint Live is gonna be a strategic thing in turning the nation. And uh, we need to get uh, in support of that. And uh, you can do that without even going. If you can't make it to Atlanta, at least come here and be in prayer. And uh, we'll do that. And, and I know we're going to see great things. One last thing, and then I'll let you go. This is our last Sunday, the final Sunday. If you're interested in becoming a member of Lord of Hosts Church, you want to be planted here and start serving God, you can sign up today at the Information Center. It's right out here to your right. And uh, we don't even charge you to become a member. There's not too many things that are actually free, no, no money out of your pocket, but, you know, we do ask you to tithe, so, but that's to God. But you'll be blessed if you're planted. The Bible tells us those that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish. That means that God will take your gifts and your abilities and help you to find the direction for your life to put those to use for Him. And uh, if you feel like Lord of Hosts is the church that God's directing you to, I encourage you to come sign up for the membership seminar. It happens on July 7th. It's a Thursday evening, one evening. And then the following Sunday, July 10th, we'll receive you in as members of the church. So that'd be a great thing if you need to take advantage of that. Do that today. And otherwise, be here Wednesday night for prayer. We'll see you. Have a great Sunday and enjoy the rest of your weekend. God bless you. And thank you for tuning in today with us online. Amen.